Milford and Me, written by Patrick Lane, illustrated by Bonnie McLean. My favorite small turtle is Milford. He likes grasshoppers, roses, and beans. He lives in my garden all summer and he always says just what he means. When you talk to a turtle, says Milford, leave spaces between what you say. Go patiently, slowly, and easy because fast only gets in the way. But especially when talking to turtles, remember, speak only in rhyme. Words are important to turtles. They've been here a very long time. Milford has wonderful stories. He should because he's lived very long. All from the time before people when turtles were terribly strong. I held up the world once, says Milford. You wouldn't believe it to see a turtle as small now as I am. But it's true, it's as true as can be. The world once sat on my green shell, all the stars and the earth and the sea. Now that was a job for a turtle, says Milford, and I must agree. Who holds it up now? I asked Milford. Who knows, says small Milford to me. It could be a flower, a grass blade, or a grumbly fat bumblebee. Then he went to sleep under a lettuce, and I looked very hard at his shell. Imagine the world sitting on it. And what if it suddenly fell? And right then a bumblebee stumbled, as bumblebees do in the air. I hope there's a turtle like Milford, and I hope he will always be there, holding the stars in his green shell, all the stars and the rocks and the sea, a brother or sister of Milford, not a stumbly, fat bumblebee. Imagine a bumblebee fumbling in the world, falling off of her wings. I sure hope there's a turtle like Milford to look after all of those things. Why are names? I asked Milford the turtle. I mean, why is a beetle called that? Why is a bird called a humming? And why is my cat called a cat? A name, says small Milford, is being. A thing to say you are the one. Names are like numbers with feeling the shape of a tree in the sun. Before there were names, there was nothing. Nobody knew how to play. There were fighting and fooling and bad times till a turtle decided to say, from now on, my name will be Turtle. And the world stopped a moment or three. Then a bird said, this is what I am. Then a rock, then a fish, then a bee. Then everything named itself, I am. Each thing was different from each. The mountains were names in a tall way, and the edge of a lake was a beach. And that is why everything's different from a rose to a cow to a leek. Before we were names, we were nothing. Just look at the days of the week. Monday is mostly a moon time, and Tuesday's a lady in white. Wednesday is hanging from trees day, and Thursday is warriors who fight. Friday will love you forever, and Saturday's home without harm. Sunday is gardens and sleeping. The days are all made out of charms. We're more than just numbers and adding. Each one of us, well, we are here, is a name that's magically our name, and so we have nothing to fear. I call myself Milford the Turtle, someone who's always your friend. That's a good enough reason for naming. And it always will be till the end. Names are far better than nothing because nothing is nowhere at all. A name is a me and a you thing. And that's why I come when you call. Milford, are there monsters in water down in the weeds and the rocks? I'd like to meet up with a monster and hear what it says when it talks. There are monsters, says Milford quite slowly. I knew some when I was first small. Some live down underwater. Some are short, some are fat, some are tall. I have a good friend who's a monster. She's kindly and really quite old. She lives in a big yellow tulip. She's always been friendly, I'm told. 
The spiders weave all of her blankets, and she sits in a red carrot chair. I like her a lot, says Small Milford. As far as I know, she's still there. We walk a long way to the tulips, way down at the end of the yard. At last, we get down to the flowers. By then, we are both very tired. I knock on the tulip quite gently. A tulip house is very small. A voice says, I'm glad you could visit. I'm glad you could come for a call. Then out of the tulip comes Mavis. She's blue from her nose to her knees. On her feet, she wears bright orange slippers. Her hair is as green as the trees. She changes shape every few minutes. Her voice is a high and a low. She laughs like the color of roses and her eyes are two tiny rainbows. I sit with small Milford and Mavis, not wanting to wander about. At first she is hidden and quiet, but after a while she comes out. We talk about climbing up mountains and living down under the sea and why everyone hated monsters when monsters are nice as can be. Most monsters are really quite tiny, says Mavis to Milford and me. My sister is the size of an apple and my brother is as small as a pea. You shouldn't be frightened by monsters. They're really nice people to meet. Then she offers us butterfly pancakes with bumblebee butter and beets. I know now that monsters aren't scary. I know they're as nice as can be. Like dragonflies, turtles, and sparrows, they're friendly like you and like me. We walk along down by the turnips. There's no one but Milford and me. We've been sharing a cucumber sandwich in the shade of a very tall pea. There are things I don't know about Milford, I say when I take my last bite. Who is God and where is he living? Is God in the day or the night? It can be quite confusing, says Milford, to explain God and all sorts of things, like maple trees, wagons, and turtles, and baseball, and robins, and swings. You see, God is more than just seeing, or having, or being, or not. God isn't a she or a he thing. God's in everything. So I was taught when I was a very large turtle, back in the days before days, God's an inside and outside and all thing, a backwards, a forwards, a maze. But mostly, God is a not name, a word that is never a word, something you can't put your eyes on, like a song when you can't see the bird. I thought about Milford and not names. I thought and I thought while I sat. And I know now I know what I'm knowing, so I think I'll go play with my cat. Because if God isn't everywhere always, then my cat is a part of God too. Like Milford and my mother and father and all of my best friends and you. Small Milford likes talking to Nolan. I know it sounds strange he does that. He talks very quickly, says Milford. He's a good friend. He's Nolan the cat. You can speak with a person, says Milford, about marigolds, monsters, and birds. But Nolan knows all about nighttime, about darkness and various verbs. They're all about hunting and hiding and stalking and leaping and jumps. A cat is all verbs, says Small Milford. He's on moving without any bumps. A verb is a going or coming, a moving from darkness to light, a climbing, a falling, a flying, a somewhere to nowhere delight that is scary if you don't know him. Or if you're surprised by his paw, when he suddenly lies down beside you and tells you about what he saw when he climbed to the top of the chimney and looked around all of the night while you and I still were sleeping, wrapped up in our blankets all tight. The end.